I have an idea. Let us peel back the layers in a blend. Greetings, chromatic warriors! That's fun to say, but welcome back. This time around, I want to talk about uh, the basics. I want to talk about diluted layers and laying out a progression of colors much, uh, much more close to the way that I used to paint. Certainly, there are more techniques to apply to create your art, but today we're just breaking down one of them. We're going to dissect a layer. So, let's take a look. Layering, dissection. The main ingredients on the palette are black, night sky, and white from the War Paints Fanatic range. My overall progression is going to go something like this, you know, if, if I want to lay it out in steps. But you can see what I've done is just mix up the a very gradual step in between each color, about a 50-50 mixture. And I'm going to lay down each of these colors a number of times before stepping up to the next one. But just keep this in mind, I have a separate puddle of each color laid out. So let's talk about dilution. Up in the corner, I'm just adding a small bead of water. And we'll take some water just like so next to our first color and thin it down about, it's about a 50-50 mixture of water to paint. Now, this is the important part. I can have proper dilution, but I can be trying to apply too much of this mixture at one time. So let's look at the figure itself. Yes, I've already had a little bit of practice on my hand, as you can see, uh, kind of trial running this footage, but you can see me just throwing some paint down on my glove. And even here, as I work along, gradually I have less and less paint. See. So if I would have started here, that's too much. I, it wouldn't be controllable enough. So what I'll be doing now, starting at the tip and breaking this down into, let's see, I have about six colors, so I can break it into sixth in a sense. Sixths, wow, it's a good word to record. But basically every color will take up a near equal portion. So here we can see a single layer and things will speed up after this but this first layer is very important to talk about because I want you to see how insignificant it is, how bad it is. If it's a little ragged that's okay because it is the gradual accumulation of many transparent possibly irregular layers gradually add up form that perfect blend. Yeah, they're going to be laying on top of each other in a sense. But I like to also think of this like sprinkling grains of sand at one end of uh, say a fish tank. You're the god of this fish tank. These grains, these sands, these pieces of sand, those are your particles of pigment. But as long as I keep casting them to the same end they will gradually drift down, nestle in next to the, uh, their neighbors, <laughs> filling in the missing pieces. I hope this metaphor makes sense. Also, seeing is believing. We just have a gradual accumulation, and you can see how it is piling up on the one end because that's the direction I'm pushing it in. Now I'll come back in for another pass, and that first layer, it was, it was much more thin, you know, just to, to set that, that gradual foundation uh, again, I make a lot of metaphors, but thinking of it almost like sculpting, you know, just kind of setting the, the groundwork, but you're, you're sculpting, you're sweeping in the same direction every time. You're, you're creating kind of flow lines for the paint, so I can add thicker amounts as I, once I have those foundational layers laid down. You, know, you can see I can go just a little bit more thick. See me adding a slightly larger amount on my glove there as an example. Just like so. I think that'll be good for this layer though. Looks decently saturated. I'll let it fully dry for a minute and then come back for the next color. 
All right, back again. This time laying down the pure night sky. So remember that first color, that first pass you're laying down. Nice and thin. It's just that foundational soil. We will later plant a deeper pigment upon it. Just let that sit and fully dry. There you see a single insignificant pass once again. But I can go a little bit heavier having that foundation in place. Just always sweeping in the same direction, touching down with my brush. You can see me tilting it, using the, the side of the brush to absorb some of that paint that will help to soften the edge as well. And the third layer, building up very nicely. I've got a pause between steps. I'm gonna let this fully dry. Ordinarily, I would be going across the entire model. I'll do that later. But just make sure everything is surely, surely dry, even after it is done gleaming. Let it sit for a minute longer. It's a nice level of saturation, though. Now, just to be safe, though, because acrylic paint can desaturate a little bit after it dries and there's an extended drying time. Sometimes you let things, uh, you set them down for the night and the next morning your brightest whites don't look quite as saturated. So I always like to go down even after things are looking fine and just add some safety layers. It's just a way of guaranteeing that I have a nice rich saturation after that overnight sag. Now we'll jump up brighter color in the progression, covering even less. I can see some of the math behind this, right? Like six colors, equal portions, at least three layers of each color before I decide that this is a, a bad progression or not saturated enough. Yeah, I'd say a minimum of, of three of these passes before you see a, a passable result. But there is something to having these steps laid out for yourself. You know, I have like a numerical progression and an amount of layers I'm going to be adding and that kind of ensures that things will be well done. The more colors that you add into this. Yeah, you see that that edge was a little rough before, but I go in for more layers, it'll disappear. Not every one of these layers starts at the same distance. They all have the same ending point, but just remember you're working with transparencies, so they can overlap a little bit. Go back for yet another pass. Nice and thin, very patient, just like so. You can see how, how wet that layer is, but just let it, let it sit and settle. The paints will start to uh, pull the pigment into the right place. You don't want your layers to look quite as wet as that last one. I just want to reassure you, it can be okay. Things are going to vary, even for someone as machine-like as me, I guess. All right, and brighter still. I wasn't sure if I was going to record every step, but I think this will move quickly enough, and it's nice to see those small variations. Those little mistakes can be uh, helpful. But also, yeah, here's a bonus. I'm encouraging you to add a good number of colors into your progression. And you think more colors equals more work. And while your thoughts are not completely wrong, it's also encouraging to know that you're covering less and less of the model as you go. So in a way, isn't the base coat maybe the most time consuming part? No, but you've already gone this far just invest a little more time to really push things over the edge. Smooth. Let's jump back in the progression a little bit. I'll grab just a pure night sky. And I'll lay down an edge highlight. You can see me just hovering over the side of the talon. Just remember to press very lightly. You don't need paint to be very diluted. It's more of a one-shot, one-kill situation. You know, ideally, just a single pass will give me a saturated edge. 
I just quickly wanted to share this part because I, I think it's part of the blended progression. You know, even an edge highlight can be a gradient. And I still have that tiny amount of pure white. He's in the most limited portion. It's the brightest color available, so I want to make sure everything else can breathe around it. Yeah, just the slightest touch. I'll do that in more than one pass as well. Make sure it's shining its whitest and brightest. Okay, and to finish off this demonstration, I'll take some pure black and just plant it down at the base of this talon. Sometimes when you're blending along, you might see a slight uh, coffee stain, some people call them, a little tide mark. You can always go back and forth in the progression, just, you know, remembering that first layer, just seeding the thinnest amount of paint down. You can smooth things out. It just takes a little bit of patience. See, I've got only a small amount of work to do in the mid-tones right here. Not bad. There is certainly more that I could do to these talons to enhance their talon-like effect, you know, creating more subtle shines to create a semi-gloss surface, but I think it's good to get back to the fundamentals every once in a while and just lay out the simple approach of the, the blended layer. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and it can uh, feed your inspiration and you can find use for it in your own creations. And I'd also like to add that practice makes perfect. One of the uh, key bits of advice often when people are having trouble doing this, they're trying to lay down too much paint, too much of that diluted mixture at one time. So if it looks bad, I would say challenge yourself, maybe touch the brush onto a paper towel, remove most of the paint and apply an amount that you think will not have an effect. Gradually turn the heat up from there. So thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting me on Patreon. It means the world to me. And as always, until we meet again down that chromatic trail, remain unchained.